Hi farm friends! It is Thursday so that means today is another Meet the Animals video. Today I'm going to be sharing our Lavender Americana flock with you. <laughs> Before we get started though, I wanted to share these gorgeous day lilies. We do have some updates for you. Our little duck and goose flock, they are growing so much. They're getting so, so big. I have expanded their pen area and right now they are still being locked up in their Avituin coop at night to keep them extra safe, make sure that no predators can get to them. They are right in our backyard for now and they are almost ready to start moving to a new coop, a bigger run. Uh, I have ordered another run and we need to put that together when it gets here and we do have another one that's already here that we need to put together. But for now, they are enjoying the backyard. They are eating all of the grass that they can get to, which if you know anyone with ducks or geese, you will know that whatever area they were in, uh, that whatever area they are in, they turn to mud so quick. <laughs> so we have been moving this little coop around our backyard, which has been perfect. It is small enough to do that. And I have these dog, uh, travel fences and baby gates that I move around and it works so well for us. Um, they do have a pinwheel out here too to keep them safe from aerial predators. So far this has worked really well for us. I will share just a tiny bit with you because we're going to have a video coming out next week about it. But Miss Tracy Britnell from Just Dig at Farms was here last week and oh my goodness did she completely sort me out and help me with our garden spaces and it felt so good to hear her say it's no wonder you're overwhelmed you have a lot of space that you can do things with and that just made me feel so so much better she is just the sweetest person and amazing at what she does i mean she's a master gardener and an interior designer and a garden designer I mean, she's just amazing. Uh, she just so quickly gave us so many ideas, so we can't wait to share that with you. I have not done a single thing that she recommended yet because there are gonna be some kind of big projects. And as you know, we have a lot going on around here, <laughs> a lot. Um, we've got our cut flower garden, which I am so excited about. We've been planning that for, oh my goodness, since before January because I started ordering seeds like last September. Um, I have aster, I have dahlias, I have a bunch of dahlia tubers that came in, um, black eyed Susan variety, um, zinnias, tons and tons of zinnias from Haas, uh, Cosmos, uh, just an amazing amount of seeds. And Miss Tracy said, Zach, you're gonna have to build her a bigger flower area, which we knew that, <laughs> we knew that. Um, but this is just our trial run. We do have uh, a local florist and a local flower truck who have said they would love to buy our flowers. And so I'm so, so, so excited about that. We're getting a late start, but better late than never. Right, you know, we have a long growing season here in Alabama. It is gonna get hot. Thankfully, uh, the oak trees that you can see behind me <laughs> provide plenty of shade um, midday and then it'll get morning sun, midday shade, afternoon sun. And so in the very, very hottest part of the day, uh, things will be a tiny bit shaded, which will help a lot. Zach has been working in the garden this week on pest control. Um, we finally have rain. It's sprinkling on me right now and I don't mind a single bit. It feels so good. Our ground needs it. Zach has been working on pest control in the big garden this week. He's going to share with you what he's been up to. Our lettuce is showing out. Y'all look at it. This is salad bowl red, which is one of my favorite lettuces that we've got growing out right now. And Haas has that. We've got some butterhead. We've got some romaine over here. We've got some cabbages that are actually kind of giving me a little bit of hope here. I was thinking we might not get anything from them, but they're looking nice and healthy. So maybe we'll get something from them. Brussels sprouts over here have exploded this week. I think the reason that everything is showing out right now extra is because we've had some really good weather for it here lately we went like two weeks 
where we were in the mid 80s or so in terms of high temperatures and uh, there was like no rain at all for like two weeks and so I was watering with the drip tape and it has been working super well y'all I am so <laughs> glad that I used the drip tape this year it has made making sure that everything has enough water perfect also um, it made it where I could do my mounded rows so that when we do get a bunch of rain I know that everything's not just sitting in that pooled up water so um, everything's looking great but but there are a few things we have got to address right now or they're probably going to become an issue so let's look at this this is in between the onions and the Brussels sprouts and then in between the lettuce rows we are starting to get some weeds coming up you can see on that side of the lettuce as well there's weeds coming up and all through here weeds are really coming on heavy you can see over here by the onions that we've got a bunch of weeds coming in on that row as well now the reason we've got these weeds coming up like this is because I have not made it out into the garden to really do any work over the last really it's been about a week since I've done some good work here in the garden um, and so you're seeing that's about a week with no weeding and so today I'm going to get in here with my wheel hoe with my stirrup hoe and with my single tine cultivator and I'm going to use those three tools to take care of this weeding issue before it gets out of hand and uh, we have got a bunch of rain coming in over the next three days and so I want to go ahead and knock out these weeds before we get all that rain because as we get that rain that means all in between my rows are going to be getting that water that the weeds need to pop back up so I want to go ahead and take care of this weeding issue before we get into a, uh, a weather system here that's going to allow for weed growth um, exponential weed growth because of how much rain we're going to be getting so I want to go ahead and take care of that so I'm going to be doing that today like I said wheel hoe stirrup hoe single tine cultivator I'll show y'all how I'm going to do that uh, but I still I want to show y'all some more of these pretty plants check the it I mean they're beautiful so right here these are some of my national pickling cucumbers and those two look really nice right there. And then we look at our squash over here. Now this one right here, we're gonna come back and talk about this one in just a minute. But I wanna show y'all just how pretty these squash are looking right now. Just gorgeous. And we're seeing some fruit on them. Yeah, I'm excited about the squash this year. Check out these watermelon rows. Y'all, the watermelons have gone off this week. Just really gone off. Really gotten some nice growth going. I am so excited about what has been happening with these watermelon plants this week. I don't know if y'all remember or not, but in one of the previous videos, I talked about how I pruned those watermelon vines back to where it was really just one true vine coming from each plant so that uh, it could focus on the growth there and so this is the big growth spurt that we got right after that pruning so I pruned probably a week and a half ago or so and the growth has exploded since then so um, I think that that worked out well for us we'll have to see with how the fruit goes let's take a look at how our potatoes are doing that I put in the ground two weeks ago check this out these potatoes are looking fantastic at least what we can tell looking at the greens up top and now I'm going to pull in some of the sides of these mounds and cover up some of the green on these so that those potatoes will have extra room to grow. Also very, 
very excited with how the tomatoes are going. Now, as you can tell, I have not put supports up for the tomatoes yet. I have got to do that in the next few days. Uh, maybe I'll let this rain come through and then take care of it. Although, this one that's on the ground here, I may have to go ahead and stake it up somehow. We are even seeing a good bit of fruit coming up on these mountain vineyard plants. The mountain vineyard tomato. The celebrities don't have any fruit getting started just yet. But they are looking pretty. <laughs> Alright y'all, let's come back and talk about this squash plant. This one right here, as well as this one down here, are showing that we have a pest problem. We've got to take care of it right away, or it's going to become a major problem. So, if we catch this pest problem early, we can stick with organic solutions. And that's what we want to try to do. Not to shame anybody that's not into the fully organic stuff or anything like that. That's not really why we're doing it. We're not worried about the organic label. It's that we know that the products that we use that are organic are safe for our family, uh, safe for our animals that wind up uh, eating some of our materials out of the garden sometimes and it's gonna be safe for these plants, which we're gonna wind up eating. Uh, also, all of our runoff on our farm winds up in our pond. So anytime we put something out, we have to be very careful because eventually, at least trace amounts of whatever we've put out are gonna wind up in the pond. So, what I'm gonna to do today to try and catch this uh, problem with pests um, now it's not just the squash. I'm also seeing some issues on my beans. I'm seeing some uh, some leaves over there that have signs of pest damage on them. Um, I noticed some on my Brussels sprouts a while back, but they seem to be doing some better. Uh, but still, I'm going to hit those as well. Um, and we want to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and treat everything. Also, I noticed that some of the fruit on our mountain vineyard tomatoes had some holes in it. And so I wanna make sure that we're treating that just in case, make sure that we're not leaving that open for pests to come in and start getting some of that fruit before we can get to it. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna treat with neem oil. Uh, every, every surface of these plants, of every plant in this garden, will be hit with neem oil today. Uh, also, I'm going to use some spinosad. Uh, both of those are organic options and natural options. And so, uh, like I said, they will be safe for us, for the animals, uh, and for the local environment as things run off into the pond and such. And so I feel good about using uh, a, a good amount of those, those materials to try and catch this pest problem before it becomes a larger issue that we might have to bring in bigger guns for that might not be as safe for the family, the farm, the environment. So let's, let's go ahead and start with that. We're going to knock out these weeds and treat our garden to make sure that the pest problem doesn't become a really big issue. Oh yeah, something else that I'm going to do with the squash plants in particular is make sure that I'm checking them really well for squash bug eggs and vine borer eggs because I know we have squash bug eggs on some of our leaves and so I'm going to take those off even before I treat with the neem oil and spinosad as an extra precaution to make sure that I'm doing everything I can to treat this issue in a holistic way. So my pump sprayer that I'm going to use for my pest control spraying uh, is one gallon so I'm going to use a little over an ounce of 70% neem oil concentrate. 
By the way, check the description of the video if you need links or a reminder of any of the stuff that I'm using. You don't have to use the same stuff I am, but I'm going to let you know whatever it is I'm using. Also, those links will be to these products from Haas Tools website, and we are Haas Tool Affiliates, so if you happen to use those links, we get a small commission for you uh, using those links at no extra cost to you. That helps us out a bunch, and you know that you've got the right product products if you follow those links but like I said you don't have to use the same stuff I do but I do want to let you know whatever I'm using just in case you want to find that specific thing Now that we've taken care of the heavy lifting in terms of weeding with that wheel hoe, let's go ahead and get the neem oil and the spinosad on these plants uh, before, uh, before we go any further. Just that way I know that if something happens and I gotta run inside or something like that, if, uh, if it gets too hot or if it does start to rain in a little bit, uh, that's not gonna be great for the materials that I'm using for uh, pest control, but I know that I did treat and it will get the bugs that are on it currently So I'm going to go ahead and treat those so that I don't run out of time today uh, And then I'll get back to the weeding Alrighty folks, we got things looking a whole lot better Ran that wheel hoe through and you can see those rows look nice and pretty now back here behind me Got all these plants covered up in neem oil and spinosad, and so I'm thinking that this round of pests should be taken care of. I will uh, go ahead and go through with neem oil again next week sometime in about a week to 10 days from today, and uh, may switch to another product other than spinosad next week. We'll just, we'll, we'll check and see. Uh, but at any rate, I'm gonna go through now here with my single tine cultivator and get the last few weeds that I'm still seeing hanging out. Uh, as you can see, most of them are out of there and gone and things are looking good. We are gonna have some rain coming up in the next few days and so uh, these rows are gonna need to be wheel hoed again next week so that we don't get uh, too covered up in those uh, weeds in between the rows. But I think we'll be all right. Taking care of them today was a really big step. That knocked them down a good bit. And I think we're all right for about a week or so. But um, anyways, thanks so much for hanging out with me in the garden. I'm coming to share that Americanas with you, our lavender Americana flock. But somebody else is demanding my attention. <laughs> Mama's boys. Hey. Hey, buddies. Here they are. Here we go. I can see you through here. Yes, I can. Hello, gravy. Biscuit. <laughs> Biscuit. Have y'all been eating all these vines? Yes. See, yes, we have. That's wild grape that he's chewing on right now. What are you doing, buddy? Oh, my goodness. They want some love from me, so I will be down there as soon as I get done with this to love on my boys. They love. They love hugs, and that just makes me so happy. So, we have a lot of chickens. Um, we have over 70, <laughs> over 70 adult breeding stock birds. Uh, majority of them are in our free range flock. We call that our rainbow layer flock. And then we have three groupings up here in our breeding pens, and then we have the White House. Let's meet some birds. Our Lavender Americanas live in what I call the White House. So this is the first coop that we built. Lavender Americanas are so sweet 
at least our line of them is. Um, we spend a lot of time with them. Uh, I haven't got to spend as much time with them lately and they're a tiny bit standoffish, but you can see they warm up pretty quick. The Americana breed is not a very old breed. It was accepted into the American standard of perfection for chickens in the 1970s. And lavender Americanas, also called self blue Americanas, were not accepted until just a few years ago. Um, I love this color variety. The lavender color is really unique. Um, most people have seen or heard of lavender Orpingtons, but lavender Americana are still somewhat rare. Americanas lay a beautiful blue egg. Now, there are other chicken breeds and there are mixed breeds that can lay a true blue egg. Uh, Aracana is a breed that lays blue eggs and leg bars also lay most of the time blue eggs. You'll find some lines that don't. Um, but, <laughs> my friends, to be classified as an Americana, as in any chicken breed, um, there is a standard of perfection written for that breed. So the way I like to explain it is if somebody has a lab, but that lab has really short curly hair and a long bushy tail and short ears that point up, you can probably say that that's not a lab. <laughs> Uh, I like to use dogs to explain it because most people understand dog breeding a little bit better than they would understand chicken breeding. And so for an Americana to be considered America, an Americana, they need to have slate legs, they need to have a beak that is slate, they need to have amber, bay, red bay colored eyes, and they need to have that significant muff and beard. And it says their muffs, which is the poofy parts on the sides of their head, um, needs to cover almost all of their eye. You need to barely be able to see the eye. So that is big, big muffs and beards. Um, the beard is the bottom part and the muffs are the sides. Um, this breed, the, the beards on these are just so cute. That is one reason I love this breed. But I also love this breed because of their beautiful blue eggs and that huge muff and beard expression because that is just to me one of their best qualities now ours do have a friendly temperament like i was saying um not all of them do i've heard people say that they have very flighty birds even if they have hand raised them um, and that is just not the case with very minimal handling they are quite friendly they don't run of course they get startled like any chicken does but they don't run from us they run to us most of the time they crave attention they go through cycles of of being right on top of my feet when i come out to feed even though they're not hungry they can have plenty of food um, it's not food motivation they just want to be with you sometimes and for the self blue lavender color it needs to be an even color all over their body now their heads are sometimes just a tiny bit darker right on top of their head but that's because of the smaller concentration of feathers that they have on top of their head small feathers um, for the most part they should be completely uh, a complete even color of that self blue lavender color one of my favorite parts of raising lavender Americanas and Americanas in general is just how adorable the chicks are. And we have some right now. They hatched in the last two days that I'm gonna share with you here. These are some of our freshly hatched chicks. And one of these is not like the others and I will show you at first glance, they all look the same. They all look like they have little fluffy beards and they look the same color. Come here. This is a lavender Americana. It has that fluffy beard and it has a pea comb. There are no points on its comb. And this one is a lavender Americana as well. You can see its comb does not have any points. And then here we have not a lavender Americana, if I can get a hold of it. Now we see that fluffy beard, but look at its legs. It has feathered legs on the outside. And if you look closely, if I can get the camera to focus, can you see those points sticking up? I know it's hard to see, but it has points on its comb. There you go, sticking up. So this is actually a first generation olive egger. Its dad is a black copper marons. 
feathered legs from the Marans and the straight comb. And it's also blue and not lavender. So the color is so similar, especially when they're young. But when their feathers start to come in, you can see this one's a little bit darker and maybe kind of a chocolate tone. And then the lavender is a more silvery color, lighter, and their heads are a little bit darker as chicks, but that changes pretty quickly. Hello, babies. So with the Americanas, no straight comb, no points, no feathered legs. Babies. <laughs> but they're all gonna be beautiful chickens. If you want to learn more about the Americana breed, I highly recommend that you check out the Americana Breeders Club and you can visit their website and see lots of photos and see more information about the breed standards and the standards for the different color varieties. And their website is AmericanaBreedersClub.org. I hope that you enjoyed meeting our Lavender Americana flock today and that you learned a little bit about the Americana breed. We're gonna be sharing more of our chicken breeds on, on Thursdays for Meet the Animals, so stay tuned for Wyandots and our pigs and more animals that we have here on the farm. Before we say goodbye today, I've got to come give my boys some love. Oh, my butt. <laughs> hey, biscuit. You hot biscuit. Hey, biscuit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you need love too. I'm here. I give you love too. Yes, I will. Give me some love too. You go up here. Oh. Biscuit is putting on weight. Uh, since they had been with mom and still nursing some, I think maybe he was still nursing a little bit more than Gravy was. Oh, my body. Yes. Oh, we want to eat mama's hair. He's putting on weight nicely with his feed and his high-protein hay. And they're doing so good, aren't you? Are you doing so good? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Now, we don't give treats every time we're out here because we don't want it to be all about food motivation, but can you tell that they like this? <laughs> this is a probiotic treat by Mana Pro. Um, it is apple-flavored and... Oh, it smells so good. We just picked it up at Tractor Supply. Do y'all want some treats? Hmm? Let's get you some treats. Y'all want some of your treats? There you go. Gravy. Biscuit? Biscuit, you better come here. That's my buddies. That was a good snack, wasn't it? Hmm? Was that a good snack? Good snack. Before you head off to watch another video, I have a fun summertime or anytime recipe for you. We have been loving using our Genovese and our purple opal basil in lemonade. We also add a few uh, sprigs of mint leaves. We muddle those or break them up, drop them straight into lemonade. I like Publix lemonade, so that's what we've been using. Uh, but I also have been infusing it in a French press and letting it sit overnight. And believe it or not, that purple opal basil color has been leaching into the lemonade and it makes it a beautiful pink. So give it a try. Just drop a couple of leaves if you're growing basil or if you want to grow basil. It's a fast growing plant and that's something that you can enjoy this summer. It's an herb lemonade and it is delicious.